because that is going to annoy the f out of me. So if I don't do it, it's going to keep on alerting me and then just telling me to do this, get this done, you asshole. thousand years later. One eternity later. Eventually. Hey guys, welcome to our new episode of How to Stay Productive. So I know productive is some productivity is something that is so distant to some of to most of us because shit, every day feels like a shit hole to us and we tend to be we tend to slack and be lazy. So anyways, this video will be broken down into three major parts which I call techniques of staying productive. So it's good. First of all, which is setting the goal and then time management techniques and how to reward yourself. So firstly, when I talk about goals, I'm not talking about life goals and other stuff or like future goals. I'm talking about actual day-to-day, -day, the day-to-day -day goals. Because, I mean, if you come to think of it, not everyone has life goals and stuff planned out for them. And we are all still in the process of figuring ourselves out and to feel like shit if we don't complete this day-to-day -day task. However, listen, hear me out. Setting goals are important because if you do not set goals, your mind tends to trick your body into thinking that you don't have something better to do at the moment when you are procrastinating and that the stuff that you're doing at that moment which is like playing games or like watching movie or just I don't know relaxing or just sitting down it's more important than your day-to-day -day task which is what your brain tricks you into thinking what I usually do is that I set out what I need to do a night before which are those little goals I set, I set it out a night before and they're all in my calendar app so that the next morning once I wake up I know what I need to do for that day I don't have to think I don't have to plan it out. I have or I have already planned out a night before, and I can straight go go into productivity. Yay! Ooh. Um, this totally helps in incre increasing my productivity. I must say that, as the thing is, the calendar app will send you notifications, right? And side note, I always set my calendar into double alert because that is going to annoy the out of me. So if I don't do it, it's going to keep on alerting me and then just telling me to do this, get this done, you asshole. Usually my alert will be will depend on their priority of the task. So it's usually um, for the second alert, it's always 5 minutes or 30 minutes before the task. Show you what I mean by setting this calendar thingy. Okay, so as you can see here, my course started around May, mid-May, and, if, and it's, if you see clearly, I don't know if it's focusing or not, what the heck? So if you see clearly here, this is a, a monthly calendar. My calendar is actually really packed, especially in June, if you can see. And 
all of this stuff, it does not include my revision time. But the thing is, if you see clearly here, I will note down what I need to do every day. And even those minor petty stuff, I will remind myself to do it. So as you can, if you can see here, it's June. Um, I reminded myself that I have an English video to watch, which to most people it is not important because it's just video. So you can just watch it um, whenever you like it. But the thing is, I have to set a goal and a time frame for me to do it because first of all, there's a lot of stuff in uni, and if I don't set it, I'll forget. And second of all. If I don't set it, I would think that it's not important and I, my mind will automatically ignore that thing and it's bad. And then, this minor stuff will allow me to refresh my memory so always use the calendar app. To stay productive, you have to note down everything. Use the calendar app or use the note app or whatever it is that can make. If you see here, my time frame in the calendar app, right, you can set time frame for it. So my time frames, like to this day, it's really packed here. So I've set up all the time frames clearly and everything is set up nicely and planned out nicely so that I don't waste my time on unnecessary stuff. Of course, accidents happen, so that's an exception. And also, when you wake up in the morning, other than setting goals, always make yourself a cup of coffee <sighs> right now. Look. Mm. By the way, I drink cold brew Because cold brew has high caffeine and it keeps you awake And I don't care if it's coffee or tea Or whatever, it's booty or milk Something that you drink usually And something that makes you happy Because if you drink it, it keeps you awake And it stimulates your serotonin to enlighten your mood And there you go, you have already accomplished one simple stuff for that day So the next technique would be to set up time blocks or study blocks or whatever you call that, I don't know. I don't know what's the term for it but I just, I'll just call it study block for now. For me, on a normal day when there's nothing much to do, I usually study and do my revision for around 6 to 8 hours and note, I am not a hyper student and I'm not aggressive, I'm just an average person so I don't go hyper and study straight for like 11 to 12 hours that's impossible for me. When I study for 6 hours, I set 3 time blocks and each block lasts for around last for 3 hours. Punctual 3 hours. And this and the time blocks after these 3 hours, the rest time, lasts for around 30 minutes to 1 hour. Um, depending on what it is, what is the context. For instance, today I woke up at 9:30 a.m. So that 3 hour time block and then I'll start resting at around 2, uh, 12.30 p.m. and then I have my lunch which takes around 1 hour maximum and I'll start work again at around 2 p.m. and I'll, and because of that 3 hour time block, I end at 5 p.m. and in the evening, your mind tends to be really distracted and you start losing focus because I tend to study lesser uh, around 2 hours when uh, after my 5 p.m. block and my 5 p.m. rest time would be around 30 minutes at most. And then I study and I will definitely end before 7 p.m. Secret to this working out is that you have to minimize your activity throughout this entire process because which is which includes standing up, walking to the toilet, or walking to take your water or something, the coffee in this case. Because your mind tends to your brain tends to get really distracted if you move around. Your, your brain actually, according to research, it gets distracted in a split 10 seconds. So if you move and go and take water, then that's where you get distracted and bam, when you come back, you lose focus. So always take whatever you need, let's say your coffee with you, if you need coffee for the whole uh, study routine, then just take coffee and then your tidbits, your bites, small bites or whatever it is that you need and take it and put it on your desk. Because then it will minimize your activity and then it reduces your brain from being distracted. And back to the 7pm, I, I set my limits at 7pm and if I don't complete all my work at seven before 7pm, I will have to continue after that 7pm period and I will get really grumpy and angry and fed up at myself for doing, for not being able to complete the task. So this is where 
my body and my mind pushes myself to maximize my productivity so I can get everything done before 7 p.m. and I complete it before 7 p.m. I reward myself. So this is where the rewarding part comes in. I reward myself, I can I can allow myself to watch movies, to play games, have some nice meals and just chill out for the day. Rewarding yourself is actually really really important. It doesn't matter if it's just a minor reward like having ice cream will do but the thing is you need to give yourself a pat on the back. You have to let your body know that well girl you did good today and this is your reward. This reward will allow your body to boost up your serotonin again and then when the next day when you start when you go on and you proceed with this routine your body knows that okay at the end of that time block that time limit I will get rewarded and I have I can do stuff that I can never do throughout this process. Also one important thing this is the most important thing. Never allow yourself to use your phone during this process I mean the study block process because if you use a phone then bad all, all of this stuff goes to waste you can only use your phone during that rest period after that 3 hour study block which is around that 30 minute to 1 hour period and during that period you don't you don't use your phone to watch movie because if you watch movie you get hooked on to that movie and to that climax or whatever it is the plot or story and then if you if you get hooked on you will have a hard time deciding whether to stop watching or just continue with work so never ever watch movie just scroll through social media catch up on news or just read or um, watch some 10 minutes video something like that phone is your biggest enemy and when you study just flip your phone down and only answer to urgent calls and just phone and leave it like far far away from you out of reach this would be my routine. Um, you have to adjust it to suit yourself at the start. I mean, at the start when you're not used to it, you tend to get really, really distracted and get really, really tired and sick of this stuff. But you have to get, let your body get used to it and it takes time really, but you need the initiative. And for the study block, some people would prefer doing a one hour block or a two hour block or maybe more. But for me, I would, coming from an average person, recommend you doing a three hour block because if you take one hour blocks it, your rest time will be more and it will be sh it, although it will be shorter but then your rest time will be more frequent and when your rest time gets frequent your mind again it gets distracted because your mind can only focus for that amount of period so if you keep on getting breaks then your mind keeps on getting distracted and um, I what I want to say is that you have to trust me. Um, it can be hard at the start, but trust me, once you carry out the routine, the more you get used to it, the better and eventually it is literally your habit and not a timetable or routine that you have to follow anymore. It is it's ingrained in you, it is your habit. And I guarantee you, after that, you will be more productive. Again, coming from a person who was a shit, who was shit 3 years ago, so trust me, your body and your mind feels better and you feel like, oh, wow, you can fucking rule the world. So, yep, catch you on the next episode and peace.